Because of you, my wife has been through hell. You've been toying with her, you lousy human being. Don't you realize the trouble you've caused my wife, and to think you're sisters? You're nothing but a burden to your own sister. The man claiming to be my sister's husband was ready to grab me at any moment. There was no reason for someone I just met today to speak to me like this. And this man referring to me as his sister, how can I explain this to this clearly mistaken man? My name is Victoria. At 33 years old, I had been engrossed in my hobbies and work during my 20s. Actions, now as I was about to transfer and put more effort into my job, my father became seriously ill. My mother had passed away a few years ago, and my sister had moved out after getting married, so we hadn't been in touch. I was aware that being single was a concern for my father. Given these circumstances, I couldn't consider transferring. I relocated near the hospital where my father was hospitalized. I visited the hospital every day to see my father's face before going to work. After work, I returned to the hospital to see my father again before going home. That became a daily routine. Although my father never said it aloud, he must have been most worried about the strained relationship between my sister and me. My sister and I weren't just estranged. We were completely cut off from each other. I had severed ties with my sister on my own accord. My sister had a habit of telling lies every day. She was like the boy who cried wolf. I had been manipulated by her lies since I was a child. Even when I became a high school and college student, her habit of lying continued. Actually, I was scouted by a top sports school, but I turned it down. She'd proudly say this, but she had never actually played sports in her life. This one day, she said, I had won a $3 million lottery ticket, but I lost it. Sounding regretful, the next day she claimed a kind man gave me that lottery ticket, but he was homeless, so I gave it away. At one point, she suddenly said, I'm dating someone in the entertainment industry. But by that time, her lies had become more sophisticated. She even created fake photos of herself with this alleged man from the entertainment industry, making it appear as if they were traveling together. It was a shoddy job of cutting and pasting photos, and it was clear that it was fabricated. But by the time I reached my 20s and started working, my sister's lies had become malicious. Because of her constant lies, I had suffered repeatedly. Fictions, I had lost so much because of my sister's habit of lying, friends, boyfriends, jobs, and even money. I had it had enough, so I cut ties with her in my early 20s and moved away from my hometown. At that time, I thought to myself I can still start over. Ten years later, I saw my sister again at my mother's funeral, but we didn't exchange a single word. My father had witnessed our estranged relationship, so he must still be worried. Even when I learned about my sister's marriage through my father, I couldn't bring myself to celebrate. For because of my sister's habit of lying, I had been deeply hurt, and she had taken everything from me. I no longer had any feelings for my sister. Etching in this state, I didn't feel anything about my sister not visiting my father in the hospital despite his illness. In fact, I didn't want her to come. However, one day, a man was standing in front of my father's hospital room, crossing his arms. 
He introduced himself as my sister's husband. If I remember correctly, my sister got married about five years ago. But since I hadn't even attended my mother's funeral, this was my first time meeting my sister's husband. Did you come to visit our father? Even though he was my brother-in-law, he was still family, so he thought I should at least make some conversation. But my brother-in-law, he only responded with vague wells and trim, making me feel suspicious about him. Still, I told myself that he was just my sister's husband and entered my father's room. Erst around that time, my father had been allowed to have some of his favorite fruits again as the doctor had lifted his dietary restrictions. So I brought some to him because he seemed to have trouble hearing. A neighbor had complained about the TV volume, so I had also bought him the latest wireless earphones. Seeing me and my brother-in-law entering the room together for the first time, my father was surprised by this unusual combination, but seemed to be happy that we had come together. Personally, I didn't mind seeing my father in such high spirits. As the visiting hours quickly passed, I had to leave the hospital room. I said to my father, I'll come again tomorrow. Exit I left the hospital room, my brother-in-law, who had hardly said a word until now, suddenly started speaking in a sarcastic tone. So you can afford to buy things like that, huh? Things like that. Was he referring to the earphones? Even if he was my brother-in-law, it was the first time I met him today, and there was no reason for him to criticize whether I could afford something or not. It just didn't sit right. Was my sister's man also a critical person? Whether a daughter brings something for her father or not is none of your concern, is it? It might come across as rude, but I was infuriated by his remark, and my tone became harsh. However, my brother-in-law would say something even more rude. None of my concern, how? You can say that pretty easily. He retorted with sharp words and didn't even look at me. Usually, I visited my father and then walked home, but I didn't want this rude brother-in-law to know where I lived. I'd heard from my father that my sister's house was about a 30-minute train ride from the hospital. The train station should be on the opposite side. However, my brother-in-law continued to walk beside me. That was going through his mind. Touching as I raised my hand to flag down a taxi that was approaching from a distance, my brother-in-law suddenly raised his voice. You're planning to run away, aren't you, huh? Run away? Why would I? They... You're trying to escape from me, aren't you? Why would I be trying to escape? Don't you have something to say to me? Don't you have something to say to me? A something. We just met for the first time today. We briefly introduced ourselves and exchanged greetings. What more did he expect me to say? Patsen, uh, you're just uh, heard from Christina. With those words from my brother-in-law, everything suddenly made sense. He was the husband of my sister, who was wrapped up in lies. My sister must have fed him all sorts of lies about me. I thought it would be best not to get involved at a time like this. I didn't want to be manipulated by my sister again, and I wanted nothing to do with her. With that in mind, I raised my hand again towards the approaching taxi. But just as I did, my brother-in-law grabbed my arm. I can't take it anymore. How much trouble do you plan on causing? Hey, don't touch me. Cause trouble. Christina has been patient because she's kind. You're truly the worst sister. Is that so? 
Christina is kind, and I'm the worst. Would you care to explain what you mean by that? Is with my arm still in his grip, I stared back at my brother-in-law with a sharp gaze. He let go of my arm with a sigh and seemed to have made a decision. Give back the $30,000? I lent it to your husband, didn't I? The $30,000. To my husband, it was too much for me to take in that I was just stunned at what he said. My sister's lies had clearly gone too far. She must have lied because she thought my brother-in-law and I would never meet or talk. Well, knowing my sister, even if we did meet or talk, she would stick to her lies. Um, how shall I put it? First of all, I am single. That can't be. You're single? I lent $30,000 to your husband. Where's the supposed husband of mine? Of course, he would be at your home. My brother-in-law looked around nervously, seemingly lost in thought. He must be extremely confused. Then my brother-in-law confirmed that I was Christina's sister and asked, You're her sister, Victoria, right? I greeted my father in front of his hospital room, entered the room with my brother-in-law, and observed us talking together. But despite this, my brother-in-law still appeared confused and seemed to doubt me as if I were a liar. He continued to stare at me. While my brother-in-law was still in a state of confusion, I checked on my phone and found out that I could obtain a document which shows evidence that I'm not married. Merchants, when I asked, should we go get this? My brother-in-law slumped down as if he had lost all hope. If you're single, then what? Are there other sisters besides you? He shook his head as if trying to shake off his own thoughts, and then sat down on the ground looking defeated. He mumbled something with his head down, but suddenly seemed to recall something. Oh, Christmas money, Christmas money, Christmas money? Are you referring to something from the past? I gave it to you, didn't I? Christmas money to your kids. I could only shake my head in silence, but my brother-in-law still persisted. Then what about the money I sent as a celebration for them to start their school? Don't you remember? No matter how much my brother-in-law said all these things, all I could do was continue shaking my head, and then I delivered the final blow to my pale brother-in-law. I have no husband, no children, and they never got married or divorced. Shared with me, I wondered, where's the sister's family? Is unable to endure my brother-in-law's talk about the existence of me that was so detached from reality. I interrupted the conversation. There was a limit to how much he should believe the story, even though she was his wife. He had continued to pay money without questioning my sister's claims. Had he never once said, let me meet your sister? I wondered if he had said that. Sensing my thoughts, my brother-in-law offered an explanation. Well, during your mother's funeral, I told Christina I'd like to say a word to your sister. But she said, today I just want to send off our mother quietly. I see, so my brother-in-law had given up on approaching me because of that. My sister's habit of lying was deeply ingrained. Ituri, when her lies were about to be exposed, she used her brain to the fullest to make any kind of excuses. My brother-in-law had believed his wife completely. Etched, despite being at my father's bedside, he must have been unable to forgive me for bringing him expensive fruits and the latest headphones. He fully felt that. If I had money to purchase expensive fruits and headphones, 
Why wouldn't I repay the considerable sum I had borrowed from him? I don't really know what my brother-in-law did after we had that talk. Xing, I feel sorry for him, but what he chooses to do after learning the truth is up to him. After all, I'm just an incapable sister to think she would deceive even her own husband with lies. That's just as all of this was happening, my father passed away. But before his passing, he had the chance to enjoy his favorite fruits to his heart's content, which I had brought for him. Although I had prepared myself for this moment, my sister Christina also showed up at her father's funeral. She hadn't visited him once during his hospitalization, yet there she was, crying her heart out in front of his lifeless body. Seeing her in that state left me feeling completely disappointed. It would be clear to anyone that my sister and I were estranged, just from looking at us. The Tivs were gossiping in hushed voices from a distance. After the funeral was over and my sister was preparing to leave immediately, I stopped her. Don't you have anything to say to me, big sister? My rare attempt at addressing her left her looking bewildered. It seemed she wasn't aware that my brother-in-law had come to see me. I briefly summarized the conversation I had with my brother-in-law, but my sister turned pale all of a sudden. She grabbed my hand and lowered her head. Hey, Victoria, let's get our stories straight, please. We're sisters. Let's help each other. If we were supposed to help each other just because we were sisters, then why does she tell such lies? No matter how many lies you tell your husband, it's none of my business. Why are you dragging me into this? I thought I had made it clear, but my sister just kept pleading, please. She might have needed a large sum of money desperately, but it was typical of her. There couldn't possibly be a legitimate reason behind it. Both our parents were no longer in this world. Even if we were sisters, there was no need for us to see each other. If you don't cooperate and get our stories straight, things will get really bad. That's going to get so bad. We have kids. If divorce is mentioned, they'll be left without a father. So what? Isn't it your fault? You brought this upon yourself. I couldn't understand what was going on in this liar's head. I felt like I couldn't even have a decent conversation anymore. Frustrated, I tried to walk away from the situation, but my sister grabbed me. I have a boyfriend. I've been secretly dating him, and my husband doesn't know anything about this. Her tone changed abruptly. It was different from when she was lying. She must be telling the truth. While I stood there with my back turned to her, she must have thought that I would listen to her if she told me the truth. She began to speak quickly. That the $30,000 that was supposed to have been lent to my non-existent husband was actually compensation that had to be paid to the wife of the man my sister was having an affair with. And to protect her kids, she couldn't let her husband find out. He said sectational quindias, the lie about my fictional husband, which my brother-in-law had talked about, was completely made up to cover up the situation. However, even after paying the $30,000, the man's wife continued to demand money using various excuses. Sit my desperate sister had even used my father's name to take out a loan to come up with the $30,000. Even my father, who was on his deathbed, had lent his name for a loan, but I guess my sister was capable of such things. I have kids, so I got into trouble. 
I lost control. I regret it. Faced with tears in her eyes, my sister continued to speak. I won't cause you any more trouble, so you should renounce our father's inheritance. I'll inherit everything, and I'll settle everything related to this issue. She broke down in tears, insisting that she wouldn't be a burden anymore. Then, and so several months passed after my father's one-month memorial service. While I was cleaning up my parents' belongings at our family home, my sister came to visit and asked, Did you renounce your inheritance? They've already completed the inheritance renunciation process. Despite me being clear, my sister kept asking repeatedly, You really did it, right? You're sure? What's your deal? You're so persistent. Okay, fine then. See ya. But with a triumphant expression, my sister tried to leave the house. But her phone rang and she answered it with a delighted voice. Hello, it's me. Yeah, I've double checked. My sister went through with the inheritance process. So now all of dad's estate belongs to me. Hey, now that this is settled, we can be together, right? Unbelievable. It seemed like everything she had said at our father's funeral about paying $30,000 in compensation to her affair partner's wife was all a lie. Later, I found out that my sister had left her kids with their father and was enjoying herself with her affair partner to go on a trip overseas using that $30,000. This woman really had no redeeming qualities. Exidy, I had thought that was the end of it, but I found myself falling for my sister's lies again. There was no need for me to keep helping her, so I confronted her. Wait, so it was all lies after all. Why are you bringing this up now? You renounced your inheritance, didn't you? I guess you didn't know, but there's a deadline for inheritance-related procedures. It's been over three months, so no matter what you say now, you won't get a single penny. My sister's vulgar laughter filled the entire house as if she had won. That's when I decided to contact my brother-in-law and tell him everything. Are you planning to contact my husband? It's fine now. Even if we get divorced, I have dad's inheritance. I can survive with that. My sister made her declaration with a smug smile while looking at me. In response, I returned her smile with a triumphant one of my own. Suddenly, my sister's expression turned anxious. I wasn't so naive as to blindly trust my sister's words. Etchens, I had thoroughly investigated my sister, so I said to her, Father must have had a hard time too, right? Being manipulated by his lying daughter, he had to pay money for you multiple times because of your actions. Even when he was sick, how do you think he managed to come up with that money? What? Why are you bringing this up out of nowhere? He was in debt because of you for your sake. But, that, that's right. So now that you've inherited everything from dad, you've also inherited his debt. Of course, you'll have to pay them all off yourself. Besides, did you really think dad has such a huge fortune? You won't be able to turn your life around with his inheritance. Too bad. What is this? This is so unfair. That's not my debt. I shouldn't have to pay for it. Dad was supposed to pay it back, right? This is so wrong. You mentioned earlier that there's a three-month deadline for inheritance-related procedures, right? Well, it's long past that, so you'll have to pay the debt yourself. They can't get away with it. 
This can't be true. It's so cruel. My sister cried loudly, just like a child throwing a tantrum. Afterward, my brother-in-law, who had learned the whole truth, confronted my sister and demanded a divorce. It turned out that the affair partner's wife also found out, and my sister ended up being sued for compensation. Despite all that, her dream of being with her affair partner never came true. He chose his family over my sister. Whereas with the burden of the demanded compensation and our father's debt, my sister divorced and couldn't even have her kids with her. She had to live on her own. But all of this was a result of my sister's own actions. She told lies after lies and caused suffering to those around her. That's atonement. I hoped she would go through some hardships. I had let my sister control my life for far too long. Thankfully, from now on, I will cherish my own life and live for myself. <laughs>